Hi guys, so today I'm going to be replacing the gasket on my oil filter housing assembly. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's leaking. So there are two gaskets. One is right on this assembly right here. And then the other one is uh, right underneath. So for you to get to this uh, gasket, you're going to have to do a few things. Um, you're going to have to remove these two. Now you don't have to completely remove it, just uh, unbolt it from these two sides. Loosen up the back end and just move it out of the way. I've already done that. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure you're saving your bolts. Then you just uh, remove the cover. All you have to do is just pull it up. Put it on the side. And uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, disconnect these and just uh, remove this whole assembly will give us more access uh, because uh, what we're going to have to do is uh, loosen up the air intake and uh, get that just a little bit out of the way because there's a bolt that needs to be loosened up to remove or uh, move this assembly basically to remove this to so we can do the gasket and there's no other way around it so um, make sure you save these uh, they tend to fall and you don't want to lose them this is mainly for your engine cover and uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, go ahead and loosen it right from here so I can just remove this piece once I loosen these bolts. And uh, these are just the T25. I'm going to make sure you save these. Well, you don't really need to unscrew it all the way because once you screw it, it you know, comes up and then they're ready to be removed. So if you do remove it all the way, just make sure you save them, but you don't need to. Not sure if it's the same design for all the parts. I think it should be. Now this is an N55 engine. So I think most of the 335i, they also have the same engine. It's gonna be the same. This is a good time to also inspect your air filter in case if it's bad. Lift it up, shake it a little bit, it comes off. This is the rubber housing, and make sure it stays intact. Inspect your air filter, as it needs to be replaced. So, for you to pull this, there are rubber grommets that's holding this on and there are wires, cables that are tied to the frame, so you're going to have to try these out. So, let me show you guys real quick. These are the three that's holding on to it and that's where the wires were so now we have full access you can leave this one on the side now you have more access to the entire air intake manifold so now we're going to have to loosen these bolts I'm going to go ahead and start removing these bolts. First one is this bolt. Rest our screws so be careful when you're removing them. You don't want to lose them. Make 
sure you guys have one of these uh, magnetic sticks so in case if you drop something you can always recover it. I did mine. I end up moving this vacuum hose right out of here. So I did that. So it gives me more room. Now I can go ahead and uh, get in the middle. But this time I'm going to be careful. I'm going to fit this one in first and then use my comes in handy to remove the bolt, let's see. you again make sure you have enough light and a magnetic stick because most likely you will end up dropping something if you're not careful so take your time do not rush no point in rushing and now I have to get access to the bottom one and that one is like right behind this, so I'm going to have to move some of this stuff. There are two T25s. If you remove these two, you can move this out of the way and get access to the... So it took me a few seconds to tape it up, you know. Now at least I don't have to worry about this thing falling behind, so... If you drop it, it's, you're going to spend a lot more time trying to recover it. There you go. Got it. So this is the hardest one, guys. Take your time. Do not drop it. Okay, so I know I'm doing this. A lot of people don't worry about any of this. You know, they kind of struggle this. But another project that I have to do on this uh, car or I want to do is clean the vanos. And the only way you can get to the Venos is from the front end. I also want to replace my belt. So I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling this stuff. And because uh, that's the only way you can do it. And uh, this will make my life easier on this particular job. Because now I'll have a lot more room to undo that dangerous bolt, you know, that's back on there. There's another bolt that's on the very back side, which is hard to get to with all this. The only way to get to it is remove this. So... Uh, thing and then this is the bolt right here so this is the bolt right here and uh, for you to get to this bolt you have to remove this this pipe coming in so and then that one is hard to get to so if I remove all this it's gonna be a lot more easier plus I can do a lot more maintenance and uh, I would highly recommend you inspecting your belt because if you have this thing leaking guys I can almost guarantee that the oil has dripped on your belt and now your belt is contaminated and what can happen is uh, while you're driving on the road, the belt can easily slip and you may get a, uh, you know, drivetrain malfunction error or some other stuff. So make sure you change your belt. Don't be cheap and go, go with the good quality belt. Clean all that mess as well. The only way you can do it is by removing this. And while you're replacing your belt, go ahead and clean up your vanos as well. So you'll end up doing a full service. You know, it's not going to be a lot more work because it's just a matter of removing this and the removal, removal of the fan is pretty easy. I ended up removing this. I think I showed you guys how I removed this. And then I removed the fan, so fan removal was pretty easy. You know, I just removed this uh, cable. And uh, there are two clips that's holding the fan, and all you have to do is just push down on them. So these are the gasket I ordered. This is the original BMW part. This is for the oil filter housing, and this is for the coolant housing on the front. And uh, this is my belt that I ordered. I'm trying this uh, Elite Poly V belt. This is supposed to be quite technology, less noise. It's a Continental, so they, they make pretty good belts, Continental. So 
and uh, your belt will vary depending on if you have the dynamic driving or not so make sure you guys uh, find out if you have the dynamic driving um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start disassembling this and start replacing so first thing I'm gonna do is remove this get this out of the way maybe hang it somewhere on the side and then try to remove the front part and uh, make sure to put a rag there remove the front part once you have that you can replace the gasket and put everything back on or you can get to the second one you know and uh, before you do that you may want to remove the oil filter out of there so you get as much oil out of this housing as much as you can so this will save you a mess and then we'll go with that okay so i loosen this bolt Just remove that bad this gets, how messy it gets. And that's what's happening guys over time, you know, the seal gets bad and it drips right here, the oil drips down and then falls on your belt, creates a mess so. So I was able to use a safety pin and uh, Pulled it out and it came right up. And I can already feel it's so hard and brittle. And you can see it already broke. Broke right off. It's really hard. It's time for me to change it. It's a little tricky but not too bad to be honest it's just hard to get to once you're in there to get the bolt i recommend just use this so it doesn't fall off the easiest way would be to get this off now the only tricky part is once you get this off you're gonna have some coolant leak so you can see how badly the oil was leaking even the screws have oil in there
one is out as well. So guys, it's a lot better. Remove that hose because the time you're going to spend fighting with this bolt is better. Remove that hose. And now we should be able to just pull this right off. Like that. Okay. So not bad. It's quite dry because we drain out the oil and everything. So I'm kind of glad that it's not too messy. So one thing you definitely want to do is clean this part really good, really good. And I can already see my coolant is like pure green, so I don't see any mixture of oil, but the oil was definitely affected. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this area pretty good. If you have brake cleaner, you know, you can use that. Just don't spray that directly. Just spray it on a rag and just uh, clean it. You want to make sure you get any imperfection right from here. The look doesn't matter, but as long as it's nice and clean, the surface. And we're going to remove that on the back side. We're going to remove the old uh, gasket so we can put the new one in. Okay. So. So broke. Look how easy it is breaking. So I cleaned this pretty good. Just make sure you do a good job in cleaning. Now be careful when you're wiping because there's a very thin edge plate right here that if you're trying to clean it, it can cut your hand. So I cut my finger. It went right between my fingers and slid it. <laughs> So it was a lot of bleeding, but uh, I'm okay. Uh, so just be careful, you know, when you're doing this. It was not aware of that plate. It's kind of like very hidden, and these edges are pretty sharp too. So I was being careful about the edges, but I had no idea that thing was hiding underneath. So just a tip for you guys, if you're a do-it-yourself or it's the first time you're attempting to do it. So now I'm going to take my gasket and... Uh, just make sure you clean the back end as well. So, the Gen 1 BMW, Gen 1 gasket. Make sure you put it in the right way. The orientation is good. Some good. Push it in all the way. Okay, so now the gasket is in, and it's just a matter of putting this back on. Okay, so I installed the three bolts. This one, the one from the bottom, and the one from the side. And now I'm just gonna bolt up the air intake. And that should complete at least this section of the job and then we're gonna do the front yes. okay so this piece is on that whole section is nice and tight and uh, you know I put everything back this uh, vacuum hose I plug this back in put this this hose back in put the two screws in connected this uh, sensor wire and uh, you know put the two screw in at the very end that we took out for the wire harness and uh, you know put all those bolts in it's all ready to go on the oil housing 
now I'm gonna go ahead and do this part and uh, here's my part number for the front housing I'll go ahead and put this in Just make sure you clean this as well you are, I already cleaned this so This is the front piece. I cleaned this pretty good. So you would do the same thing, clean it pretty good. You know, I tried cleaning this, but that's the best I could do. So I don't want to put any harsh metal against this just to get this out because you can put a scratches and once you scratch this part, you know, it will leak. So there's no point on going crazy with it as long as you clean it nice and even. And as long as you don't have chunks stuck to it, I think it should be good. tight that is the completion of this entire job so you know, I put this hose back on that's one of the things I removed this whole assembly is back on this whole thing is on I'm just double checking my work just to make sure I didn't leave any anything out before I start the car now yes you can start the car without this uh, air filter you know for a little while don't drive it like that and yes you can start the car without a fan on of course you don't want to leave it on for a long time because it's going to overheat if the fan is not working so uh, my belt is still on so that's good I'm not going to put the fan on because uh, my next job is going to be replacing the belt because it's all contaminated with oil and uh, also I'm probably going to clean my van hose as well so check out my other videos for that particular part of the job and uh, I'll show you guys when I do that, but uh, for right now, I think I'm done with my oil filter housing gasket and the front gasket. And, uh, you know, putting this back on, I mean, I'm sure if you guys removed it, putting it back on is just a reverse, you know, same thing. Just go reverse on that, you know. So, so I think I just double check your work, make sure you don't leave any wires unplugged or anything like that. And uh, once you start your car, leave it on for a little bit because that oil is going to come in, circulate and all that stuff, you know. So, guys, that's pretty much it. So, check out my other video. I'm going to leave it in the link below once I am done with that part of the job. So, check out the link. You know, if you don't, if you don't see it, I haven't uploaded it, but I will upload it. I promise to you guys. So, subscribe to the F10 playlist and you will see a bunch of the stuff I did on this car. So, hopefully, you guys like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you.